Hi, everybody. Welcome to the KC Cairo Pulse podcast brought to you by Cats Consultants, helping doctors keep their pulse on success. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Perush, and I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Dr. Troy Fox. Hello, Dr. Troy. Hello. How are we doing today? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. Good, good to see good. you today. What's, yeah. uh, what's the, uh, the write-in question of the day? So this is a good one. This is actually uh, written by a non-chiropractor um, friend of mine that watches our podcast, which I was like, <laughs> wow, funny. you must be really bored, right? <laughs> no, I, I think our podcast does have a lot of good stuff. But as a non-chiropractor, I'm like, is there a lot of this stuff that doesn't make any sense? He goes, no, you know, I'm a business guy too. And I get where you guys are coming from. It makes sense. You guys are talking about how to run a business. And so I thought very interesting. So well, here's awesome. his question though. He said, you know, and you guys are going to love this. You know, there's been a lot of talk lately about UFOs and the UFO revelations <laughs> of the U.S. government. And I'm like, where is this going? And he goes, so what are you guys' thoughts? Do you do aliens need chiropractic care? <laughs> <laughs> that could be the best question that we've ever been asked. That's the best one ever. I'm going to bring, I, we're, we're going to bring Jeremy Corbell on the show. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a guy that's all over the news all the time. He's like the U, U, ufology expert. So he may know more about this than we do. What would, and here's, here's the thing. It's kind of like a human though, from a standpoint of what qualifies a person for chiropractic care. What are, what, are the, what are the qualities that an individual has to have that they could receive chiropractic care? Okay, this is interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to run with it. Where, <laughs> where do we start with this? Uh, well, first of all, we, I guess we'd have to uh, evaluate the, uh, the alien mm -hmm. to, uh, to determine the best course of care. Um, we'd have to figure out how to communicate as well. That'd be important. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to guess there'd be a lot of, a lot of pointing and, and mumbling. So um, communication is number one. All right. Yeah, you'd like have to be able to communicate. Is... Okay. Um, we'd have, we'd have to build a level of trust. So we'd have okay. to build a trusted relationship. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about UFOs. Um, you know what though? L listen though, because the, as you go through this, you do realize that this is an exact parallel with what we <laughs> do with human individuals and how you develop a relationship with a patient. This is very important. So it, it, communication, it level of trust. Yeah. We'd have to have a, a, a keen understanding of how their condition started, whether it started <clears throat> on this planet or their planet or right. extraterrestrially, or um, if they uh, maybe had a spaceship crash between themselves and ET, for example. Right. Right. Um, so we'd have to figure that part out. We okay. would uh, need to be able to communicate the financial component as well as the period of time in which we would want to treat the patient, AKA the treatment plan. Um, so again, we're back to communication, but communication of their condition and our recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we, we, we'd have to make sure that we didn't bring in a level of poverty complex um, because we certainly wouldn't have any idea of their wherewithal to pay. Right. <clears throat> um, we have none. We have none. I suppose we could take it out and trade and we could wind up with a, with a spaceship in our garage. Um, hopefully sweet. it's electric or nuclear or something. Yeah. Um, and then, then during the exam, we would just have to uh, really be on our toes to use our, our uh, fantastic chiro ufologist diagnosis <clears throat> uh, understanding to uh, really bring a solid diagnosis to develop a treatment plan from. So we'd right. have to be and able to really tell that story about where the condition started and how we're going to treat it and what yeah. the possible outcomes are going to be. It'd help if they had a spine. It would. it would, you know, I mean, you know, they could have sinus congestion and we could put some diathermy on them or something like that. <laughs> but you know, if it's a, if it's a, you know, if they're telling us that they got, you know, low, low dorsal pain, um, and I'm going to say it that way because I don't know if they have backs or not. Maybe, maybe you'd call it a back, but 
you know, we'd want to find that out. So we had to do a really good exam, right? Pretty, pretty in depth. And we had to be on our toes, which the same thing we'd want to be with every, every patient that walks through the door. Sure. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And, and we'd have to think about the mechanism of injury. You know, if they just flew in from, you know, 30 million miles away, um, yeah. they've been doing a lot of sitting. Yeah. Um, I, I guess they would call it sitting and, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to understand their mechanisms. Yeah. You know, do they fly in a standing position, seated position, right. laying down, um, sedentary and weightless, sedentary and weightless. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'd, we'd probably want to know that bone structure was good. Right. And then yeah. what, is, what is gravity doing to him? Yeah. Uh, that they're here yeah. and in our office. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't think most of us practice in an anti-gravity situation. No. No. So, you know, and then if we determine what our treatment plan is, you know, what, what, what is the course of care? Are we Mm -hmm. doing decompression on them? Um, If we put muscle stem on them, do we um, completely alter their neurology? Um, Or do they, or do they end up pulling out one of those pulse laser guns and shoot us because they're afraid vaporizes? Yeah. Vaporizes. I mean, you just don't know at that point. You just don't know. So, you know, Again, that goes back to you've really got to develop a great relationship you do. and really have a keen understanding of what's going on with the patient. Okay, so I'm going to pause you here because everybody's going, <laughs> oh my gosh. Where are these think guys of, going? Think about what we just said with that, though. It's exactly what you do with the patient. You, 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 you communicate with the patient. You find out what's going on with them. You develop a relationship. You do a solid exam on that patient. You relay what the cost is, how long it's going to take. When you do, uh, uh, you know, treatment with that patient, you want to talk your way through it. I was joking about the the laser gun and shooting you, but have you ever just started, you know, a therapy with a patient without even asking? Have you ever had ultrasound? Have you ever had cold laser? Have you ever whatever that whatever that treatment may be, an infrared sauna treatment? Don't you want to explain the the you know the benefits and the risks of that? You may want to ask a couple of questions, like when you get ready to shoot X-rays. Obviously, it's pretty important right. to know if it's a female of childbearing age. Are you right. pregnant? Right. Out of important. So there's questions that we ask before we do these. And then we want to talk to the patient because sometimes patients have concerns about the treatment that you're going to do. Sometimes they have treat that they have concerns about the adjustment, or maybe they want to know what's this flexion treatment like, or how does a drops table work? You know, I love explaining force equals mass times acceleration and drop tables <laughs> that force equals mass times acceleration is, is, is the best uh, description or the, the, the best physics equation ever in the world, because it relates to chiropractic every day, all the time. And so I like to talk to patients about that. So if you think about the alien walking through your door, that alien could be a patient that is just unfamiliar with chiropractic care. Right. And it, it could be a patient that's unfamiliar with chiropractic care and may have migrated here. Is that migrated or immigrated, immigrated? I, anyway, so they came here from another country. Flew in. I, I, I'm from Kansas. I mean, you can't blame <laughs> me, right? I, I don't know. Um, so they came from another country. And I, I had a patient like this a while back. Spoke very poor English. Mm-hmm. The only positive that I had going for me is that she worked for a chiropractor in Panama. The country oh, that's of Panama. Awesome. Yeah. So she already understood what we were talking about, but I thought, man, if she didn't already know me trying to explain how say electrical stem worked or ultrasound worked or cold laser might be a real challenge for me. So, you know, I, I'm not equating somebody that doesn't speak English as somebody that's uh, a UFO, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's a language barrier there that we have to get past. So if you look at what we just talked about, as funny as it may be, you know, can, you know, can we, can an alien get chiropractic care or should they get chiropractic care? Relate that to a patient that maybe struggles with speech or maybe uh, doesn't speak English as their native language. And they're just trying to learn it right now. Or doesn't Uh, know chiropractic even. Or doesn't understand chiropractic. You have to give them what I call bedrock. You have to give them a place to start from. Yep. Because they hear that they're going to hear a lot of things. I mean, we as chiropractors have heard from patients over time. Oh, I heard that this chiropractor hurt this patient, or I heard this about chiropractors. 
we're hearing less and less than I can tell you guys that are young in practice right now that you're new. You have mm-hmm. no idea what it was like 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago. And, and the generations before, yeah. before Dr. Perush mm-hmm. and myself can tell you that it was a lot worse before then. But I, I, I can tell you like when I first started into practice, mm-hmm. um, the, there was a medical doctor right down the street that had anti-chiropractic literature in his office. So when I walked in to introduce myself to him, when I moved to town, naive young chiropractor, right? I walk in and there's all this anti-chiropractic literature all over his waiting room. Hi, I'm Dr. Fox. I'm the new chiropractor in town. He and I actually developed a relationship. He took the Mm -hmm. literature out of his office later on and he actually referred patients to me. You know why? Because I created a bedrock with him as a medical doctor too. So sometimes, sometimes that alien that you're speaking with, may not even be one of your patients. It may be somebody else that's a decision maker that may be in charge of someone else's health care or help them out. This medical doctor didn't understand chiropractic care, why they would need it. He had a real honest conversation with me Mm -hmm. and said, explain to me what you do and why you do it. So So I can understand it because obviously I have a very dim view of chiropractic. And he was an older gentleman. He'd been around for for a while. He was near retirement. He was amazed when I told him what chiropractic really did, what Mm -hmm. we were really trying to do. And we got past the myths and things that he'd heard and been told. So there's your alien right there. It it could be a patient that needs to understand better. It could be a member of the public that needs to understand a little bit better or is willing to understand and wants to have that conversation. Well, and maybe we should flip that term around just a little bit. And instead of <clears throat> the alien coming to us, maybe chiropractic is the alien because people just don't understand it sometimes. And that very we, well could be. I think this conversation points to the fact that you've got to treat every patient differently from the last, mm-hmm. number one. And number two, you've got to treat every patient in the beginning to create that bedrock. I'm going to use your term because mm-hmm. I love it. You, you've got to create that bedrock with the assumption that chiropractic is an alien life force to them. Yeah. And it's our job to help them understand it. I love how you flipped it. That actually makes perfect sense. Rather than them being the alien, we're the alien and they're trying to, they're trying to explore and they're trying to communicate with us. If we refuse to communicate and just say, lay down on the table, that doesn't create, they don't understand what we're doing or why it's kind of like, you know, I walk up to you and I've got what looks like a gun, but you know, if I held a cell phone or a smartphone out in front of you 40 years ago, (laughs) what would you think? Right. You'd freak out. I'd need to explain why I had a smartphone and they'd still think you're a little weird 40 years ago, but you know what I mean? That technology was not around then. Yeah. 40 years ago, you would have thought it was some kind of special calculator. Yeah. Yeah. Or I was from the future, which I probably would have been if I had a smartphone, but (laughs) you look at that that way. And I think it really opens up a lot of avenues. And I think it explains sometimes why we, and and I'm going to use the word burnout. Sometimes we get a little burnt out on explaining ourselves. And Mm -hmm. I've talked to a couple of chiropractors recently that are like, yeah, I don't even like to explain that stuff anymore. I'm like, just lay down on the table. Trust me, do this, do that. Uh, You know, I don't know that that's doing uh, yourself a disservice. I think you're doing a huge disservice to the patient and yourself when you do that, because you have an opportunity for a patient to learn great benefits of chiropractic care and what it's really all about. You know, I want to, I want to kind of close with this. I saw a video on YouTube Mm -hmm. and it was a couple weeks ago and this really got my attention. So there was a chiropractic patient and this chiropractic patient was a quadriplegic. I've never treated a quadriplegic. I, have. Um, I don't know if you have. Okay. I have. Mm-hmm. So I've never treated a quadriplegic, but this person was one of these sensationalist YouTube people. And Great. his video got reviewed by an orthopedic surgeon. Mm-hmm. Didn't understand chiropractic. You could tell he didn't. He didn't understand it, nor did he have any desire after watching that video mm-hmm. to understand what chiropractic care was. Basically, he said, this guy's either a complete idiot or he's got stones the size of, and I think we know when we say stones, what that means, the the size of boulders. And that's really where he started that video. And then he went into it and just tore this guy apart. Oh, I can't imagine. He didn't understand 
the, the reasoning of why he was, and even the patient, once they got done, they said, I can't put my finger on it, but man, I feel better. And he's like, that doesn't make any sense. This guy's paralyzed. How could he feel any better? We know as chiropractors from a nervous system standpoint that we are going to impact signals, the old mm -hmm. safety pin cycle, right? Some of you don't want to hear that. Some of you say, well, that's outdated, but it, you call it what you want, but afferent and efferent signals, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. If we improve that signal, is that person going to feel less dis-ease? Are they going to feel more well-being? Absolutely, they are. Sure. That was a real good case. Uh, I don't know who the alien was. If it was the chiropractor doing the sensationalist video or, or it was the, the orthopod that didn't want to hear what the chiropractor had to say because of what he saw. And, and I get it. It, it, was, it was one of those deals where... I'm looking at that going, is that really something that you needed to put on YouTube? Uh, maybe it was, and maybe I'm nearsighted. But I look at it sometimes from a standpoint of, if you're not going to explain what you're doing, and you're just going to put up a video on the patient at the end says, I feel better, I can't put my finger on it, but I feel better. I, I struggle a little bit with that as well. So, some, so I, I think we need to explain ourselves a little better at times. Communication. I, I think we do. And I, I think we've got to realize that maybe part of our job at times is to not let chiropractic care be the alien in the room. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we, mm -hmm. we still, not everybody needs this today. People understand chiropractic a lot more, right? but you are going to have that occasional person that comes into your office and whether it's a language barrier or they just have never had chiropractic care before, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure that we uncover that person and give them the education and, and understanding that they need along the way. Right. And I, I want to make one little point here. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun topic. I, I love, I love how we, Oh, we had a good time this. with this great time. I just, I'm going to throw a little disclaimer just because of what, where the world climate is right now. Mm -hmm. When we, when we were saying alien, we're, we're not meaning it in a derogatory fashion towards mm -mm. any human being. No. We're just, it, it, just an analogy. And I, I love it. So tell your buddy, <laughs> thanks for sending this in. Yeah. I love it. It's just an analogy that it's chiropractic that sometimes is so misunderstood by people that we've got to make sure that we uncover when those people are in our office and in front of us and make sure that mm -hmm. we help them become friends with chiropractic and it's no longer alien to them. So whether you call us the alien or the, or, or the individual walking through the door, the alien, which like we said, we're, we're not being derogatory to anybody, <laughs> but if you, if you put the onus of responsibility where it should be, where does the finger point, whether we're the alien or not the alien, it's still our responsibility. Whether, whether somebody comes in that doesn't understand chiropractic and maybe has that language barrier, or maybe they're just a little scared because of, of something they heard from a friend of theirs or whatever. That's our job to, at that point, let them know what the risks and benefits of chiropractic care are, how it works. Yep. This, you know, it, it's yep. your decision. Here's what I do. If, if we're the alien, which I like your analogy a lot better, I actually think it fits a lot better. If we're the alien, we need to reach out to humankind and explain to them that we mean no harm. And, you know, here's the, here's the great thing about chiropractic care. And I throw this out a lot of the time. If you want to know how safe it is to go to a chiropractor, a really good litmus test is malpractice rates. Yep. Fantastic malpractice rates. Why? Because chiropractic is safe. And yep. that's a really great thing. When I talk to patients, I talk to them about that at times. You know, my malpractice insurance <laughs> is, is comparable to that of an optometrist, even mm -hmm. less. In, in most cases, it's even mm -hmm. less. And they're like, oh, wow, really? Okay. And that actually resonates with a lot of folks. So yeah, communication. But yeah, whether we're the alien or, so, or the other party is the alien, the onus or responsibility still falls back on us to communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love it. As, as we found ourselves in the beginning... What do we do in times like that? We go back to the basics. We yep. review the case. We communicate. We build a trusted relationship. We protect chiropractic by doing all of that. You talk about mm -hmm. malpractice. We yeah. protect chiropractic by doing all that. And all of a sudden, chiropractic is no longer alien to that patient. And we've just right. opened up one more person to the benefits of chiropractic care.
Absolutely. So I think well, I we just you, became Cairo ufologists. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this topic because yeah, that was when, fun. I, when I first got it, I was like, no, we, we're not using it. It was just <laughs> a friend of mine being kind of, kind of a smart <laughs> aleck. And, but I thought, you know what? I, I started thinking about it and that's why we used it as a topic. Cause we felt that it really related to your practices. So I hope you guys listened all the way through on this and you learned something. If you want to know more about how we can help you and your practices, Dr. Perush, how do they get a hold of us? Super easy. Go to catsconsultants.com, top right corner of the front page of the website, the homepage. Um, click on schedule a consult. That'll take you right to my calendar. Let's schedule a breakthrough call. They're free, no obligation. Let's just talk about your practice. Where are you at? Where you want to be? How can we help? Um, if you want to send a question in for us to put on a podcast, um, just send it to Troy at catsconsultants.com. Let us know what your thought is, what you want us to talk about and whether or not you want us to use your name and location. If you don't want us to, we won't. All right, everybody. Thanks for flying in our, our spaceship today to talk about UFOs and chiropractic care. <laughs> Thanks for springing that one on me, Troy. Yeah. All right, All right everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Casey Cairo Pulse podcast brought to you by Cats Consultants, helping doctors keep their pulse on success. So from all of us here at Cats Consultants, stay well adjusted. <laughs>